Um, so just touching on what uh, fashion provided, I I'd like us to take a step back. Um, I think the brief really tries to zoom into understanding the pie of retirement savings that we have. How can we ensure that we bring in uh, those that are not part of the pool yet? So if you contrast that to uh, financial services, when we talk about the unbanked, um, if there's a word for it, the unretired, how do we incorporate them into the existing pool? And even for those in the pool, how do we how do we ensure um, that the provisioning is adequate? And I think adequacy then speaks to when you do retire, which is what we wanted to, what he was explaining with the net replacement ratio. Can you survive um, on that retirement? And I think that immediately must then tell us that when we speak of retirement savings, we need to understand it's a societal issue. So you cannot divorce. Um, the nation at large, the society at large from retirement. And because we're saving for the future, I think the key premise we should understand this from is what kind of nation do we want to be? Um, there's always this analogy of um, the grasshopper and the ant. <laughs> During winter, the grasshopper is just feeding, and the ants make sure that they work hard and store away food um, for later days. And we need to decide what type of nation we want to be. And that in and of itself requires a primary understanding and improving on financial literacy for retirement. But we need to be a generation that makes sure that in our working lifetimes we save for the future so we don't rely on the the society and the economy of our future generations, that we don't encroach in their income just because we today were taking a short-term view on our needs that are immediate um, at the expense of um, old age. And when we speak of old age, um, we must just recognize that there is care involved, there is expensive health care, and increasingly relying on the state, um, it, it just robs from future generations. So the notion of the national um, pension system then is plausible. Um, what has been a, a sticky issue for the retirement industry is that there's a requirement that this may have to be subsidized by the current um, retirement system, those in the current form of employment may have to subsidize um, to make it uh, sustainable um, and to ensure that there's some level of adequacy for the whole pie in the beginning. And the fear in that is that if I'm required to contribute to a national pension scheme as well as my occupational pension scheme with my employer, it might jeopardize the occupational pension scheme. I might not then want to uh, part, contribute to that, and maybe my employer may not even want to participate in that. And I think we must understand that occupational pension schemes are reliant on the employer. And we need to do as many things that make it attractive for employers to want to set up a pension scheme to begin with uh, for employees. And then this touches on many things like incentivization. I think very recently we had some uh, tax reform initiatives that haven't been passed into the legislation, but there was this incentivization that raised um, the, the tax free uh, from 40,000 to 150,000. And these things should hopefully encourage um, us to want to save more and to activate uh, the voluntary um, savings that you can save more. So coming back to asking, so let's have the two buckets where we say, how do we bring those that are not currently in a formal pension scheme, ask how do we increase the pool? And uh, if you look far and wide, the truth is over and above an old age pension scheme, if you're going to have um, a national pension scheme, the source of income is generally taxes. Um, and once again, the function of a nation's economy determines um, how much from the budget can we put aside to save. So we almost can't divorce the savings culture. 
we definitely have to work on our financial literacy. Um, and we definitely need to understand what is the ideal system that we ought to design. Um, they speak of a three-pillar system where you have you know, the first year either being something like an old age pension or a national scheme where everyone who has a source of income, whether your employer wants to contribute or not, um, if you're just someone who's self-employed um, or you have very low levels of income that doesn't allow uh, for your employer to think it's even worthwhile starting a scheme, that that is nationalized and everyone contributes. And then you have your occupational scheme and your voluntary schemes. And so in other countries, it's a given, and maybe it's because of the level of financial literacy, that people don't have a problem to contribute to a national pension scheme as well as your occupational pension scheme, because they just feel it's, it's, it's like if you understand saving and you have different saving products out there, that this, that is their last cushioning. Um, especially now in times where a lot of pension schemes are moving away from defined benefit to defined contribution. There are market cycles where a lot of those defined contribution schemes retire into market cycles where, where their net replacement ratio would be highly affected. They just can't get much out. Then you have um, that other small little cushioning from the compulsory um, national pension scheme you had to belong to. But to make all these things possible, I think we must have the real discussions of um, what makes it attractive to even want to save and make sure we look at things like taxes, um, if we have to look at sustainability, what will those levels of contribution be? Um, but I think we can't divorce all these things from financial literacy. Um, when we speak of retirement outcomes for those that are now uh, in the scheme, um, and you, you ask yourself, how can you ensure that you have the highest outcome upon retirement? And um, things like preservation, which was a topic <laughs> that was so hot, um, is unfortunately um, a very big contributor to making sure that your pool at the end um, is, is, is sufficient to some degree. Um, and Khashon um, mentioned the OECD speaks of 60% uh, as, as of late 75, and that's really where that 75% came from, is to say that if you're able to retire, getting 75% of the salary you used to get before retirement, that generally will ensure that you can continue um, with sufficient care and sustain some level of adequate lifestyle or dignified living. Uh, that's really where that 75% came from. And obviously things like the administration costs of running the scheme, and, and that's a very important one because in Namibia, we have about 212 pension schemes for a 349 million roughly at that December size. That's too many schemes. We have to look at introducing uh, or re-looking at the governance of umbrella schemes and making sure we have these umbrella schemes so that all the little schemes out there can join an umbrella fund so that there's economies of scale that we make sure that you know it, it becomes um, efficient and that we have um, higher outcomes. Um, I hope I've shared some nuggets. I'm sure my five minutes are up, um, but we will discuss as we deliberate further. Thank you. Thank you.